The ideal solution for presbyopia is to restore accommodation. However, uh, no procedure to date has been able to reinstate the natural dynamic focusing mechanism of the eye. So most approaches to correcting presbyopia have to find a way to imitate accommodation. Our approach was to utilize the inherent neural processing capability of the human visual cortex to filter spherical aberration as a dynamic neural pseudo-accommodating solution. A small amount of spherical aberration results in rays of light focusing in a small blur circle rather than a single point, meaning that the retinal image will be slightly spherically aberrated. However, due to the natural ability of the visual cortex to process spherical aberration and enhance edge detection, the image in the mind is perceived as a sharp image. The advantage of spherical aberration in the eye is that there is a range of focal distance points where the image will be equally blurred but still perceived by the mind as a sharp image. This range is the depth of field. Outside of this range, the perceived image becomes blurred. This visual system can be thought of as a dynamic neural pseudo-accommodating system. This increase in depth of field due to spherical aberration has been confirmed by various groups using adaptive optics. As spherical aberration is increased further, this continues to degrade the retinal image, and one reaches a threshold beyond which the visual cortex is no longer able to completely process the degraded image, meaning that the perceived image starts to blur, although the perceived image is still significantly less blurred than the retinal image. Our work taught us that it is possible to increase the depth of field by the equivalent of about one and a half diopters before reaching this threshold. Therefore, this strategy alone cannot provide full presbyopic correction without compromising safety. So we have combined the increased depth of field with a 1.5 diopter micro monovision to achieve good near vision with a lower degree of anisometropia than traditional monovision. If we consider the difference in visual acuity between the two eyes in traditional monovision, while the dominant eye sees 20-20 centrally, the non-dominant eye sees between 2100 and 2200 at distance. With this degree of image disparity, fusion is not possible and therefore suppression is required in order to perceive a single clear image. This explains the relatively low tolerance and also the loss of stereoacuity in traditional monovision. In contrast, the visual acuity of the near eye in modified monovision is between 2050 and 2080, which means that the degree of image disparity is low enough for fusion to occur, and therefore provides binocular vision requiring minimal central suppression. This is demonstrated by the fact that uncorrected functional stereoacuity is maintained at near. Finally, the natural process of interocular rivalry identifies the eye with the sharper field of vision for a given distance and then selects that eye to become the dominant conscious vision at that distance. This is a, quite in contrast to the intraocular rivalry that is required in a multifocal approach or the suppression that is required in a monovision approach. Modified monovision is performed as a standard LASIK procedure with a wide range of refractions that can be corrected simultaneously. Published results reported at one year post-op show that the binocular uncorrected vision was 20-20 or better at distance and J2 or better at near in 95% of myopic patients, 77% of hyperopic patients, and 95% of emetropic patients. No eyes lost more than one line of corrected distance visual acuity, and contrast sensitivity was either the same or better than preoperatively. The small anisometropia is instantly reversible simply with spectacle wear or by standard LASIK retreatment, which can also be performed if shifts in refraction occur over the years. In the Presbyond Laser Blend Division treatment planning software, spherical aberration control is based on a number of factors including age, accommodative amplitude, preoperative wavefront, tolerance to anisometropia, and the refractive error to be treated. This method offers binocular vision at all distances without compromising safety, quality of vision, or stereoacuity, 
and delivers considerably better outcomes when compared to multifocal intraocular lenses, multifocal corneal ablations, inlays, and other intraocular lens approaches.